Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Damien Plisko. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how I took this Honda Civic Type R shot and turned it into this shot here. So let's get started. So as always, we're going to begin today's tutorial in Lightroom, where I'm just going to quickly go through some of the adjustments that I made to this image before we head over to Photoshop, where we do further adjustments, cleanup, and adding those additional abstract elements, which will be the focus of today's tutorial. So let's get started with some of the basic adjustments. Uh, as I said before, I have these kind of written down already, so I know how to replicate the effect that I've had before. So I may go into detail about how, why I made those adjustments, but for the most part, I'm just gonna kinda quickly go through them and then run into Photoshop just for the sake of time. Um, so the first thing of, as always guys, we always wanna make sure that the, um, we have our profile correction set up correctly so it matches and is optimized to the lens that we're using. Once we have done that, uh, I always start from the top to the bottom. I work my way down. Uh, and the first thing I did to this image is just warm it up just a little bit by bringing it up to 6,000 uh, temperature. And then just bringing it up again up to 10 just to bring in some more of those reds. Um, I felt the image was a little bit overexposed, so I uh, brought it down by about minus 30. Um, and then I brought the highlights down because this image was actually shot about uh, at noon. So the sun was very high. So it uh, some of the highlights was very uh, blown up. So I decided to reduce the highlights by about minus 70. Um, and then I went to the shadows. And as you can see, a lot of this a lot of these uh, components on the car here are uh, very hard to tell. Uh, you can't you lose lose kind of the details, so I decided to brought up the shadows by about uh, seventy five, and as you can see, it's already looking better. Um, I brought up the whites just because I reduced the uh, the highlights, so I brought up the whites by about twenty five, and then the blacks again. Um, I felt a little bit too dark, so I decided to black uh, bring up the blacks by about. 75 and again this may look like it's losing some of the contrast um but uh to be honest like we're gonna make further adjustments to make this image obviously uh have way more contrast in the future so just stay with me uh we're gonna up the clarity by five which obviously helps with the contrast and of course i forgot to uh up the contrast as well by about 15. So that's gonna bring back more of that vibrant scene to the image. And then of course I dehaze the image about 35. Once again, oops. You don't wanna do that. So as you can sell, tell, now we're gaining back some of those details again. And then I just brought down the vibrancy about minus 15. Now we're gonna work our way down to the HSL uh, hue saturation luminance uh, panel where I made some further adjustments. And uh, I, again, once uh, when I'm making the adjustments, I might explain exactly why I was doing this. So for the first one, um, let's go under the saturation panel. I upped the reds by about five. Uh, I felt like I would bring out some of those details in that red trim, the logo, the type R. Um, then I decided to reduce the orange by about minus 30. Um, I wanted to take out some of the orange, uh, from the ground and the surrounding area. Uh, same as the yellow. I brought that down by my minus 30 again. And then I went into the aqua and I brought that down by about 35. Okay, and then the blue by about minus 40. Just to lose some of that uh, blue overcast that was in the image. 
And then I went over into the luminance panel and I only made three adjustments. And one of the first ones, the biggest one was bringing up the red to about 75. And what that did is uh, it really brought out those uh, red details in the car, in the wheels, in the logo, and in the front splitter here. And then I brought up the orange by about 10. There was still some orange in the car. So by bringing that up, I actually brought up the brightness of the car. So that helped me a little bit once I got into Photoshop as well. And then the yellow as well. Um, those may be very minor, but um, they're subtle enough to work for me. So next thing, um, I did the sharpening uh, of this image. And again, I usually go up to 70. And then based on just looking at the image, uh, I kind of use this little tool here to look over different parts of the car and see if there's any noise. So in this case, I didn't really see any noise when I brought up the sharpening to about 70. Um, so I only brought up the luminance, the noise reduction by about 10. Um, and that's about it. Now that we're finished in Lightroom, we're gonna head over to Photoshop to make some further adjustments. So now that we're in Photoshop, um, one of the first things that I did was to uh, clean up the entire image. So get rid of all this unwanted clutter that was in the background, uh, get rid of this door, get rid of this little vent here. Uh, there's a lot of garbage here that I had to clean up, uh, some just random stuff right on the ground, some weeds on the door. And as you can see, let me just toggle on and off. Um, I didn't do a perfect job with this stuff because I knew I was going to be putting those abstract lines behind the car. And I did the best that I could, not really knowing what was behind here. So um, again, I'm not gonna go into detail exactly how I did all of this. Uh, if you guys watch some of my previous tutorials, I show how to remove unwanted objects using the clone stamp tool and the, uh, the patch tool. Uh, but essentially it was pretty important to clean up this image because I felt it was a bit too busy with all that stuff in the background. Um, so I did that. Um, another thing that I did was um, when it came to the car, if you can see in the original image, uh, there, were qu there were quite a few hot spots from like the sun shining on the car. So again, using the clone stamp tool, I went in and kind of cleaned that up. Um, so if I toggle back and forth, especially even on the windows here, there's some stuff reflecting. You guys can see I got rid of that as well. Got rid of this hotspot here. I got rid of this uh, camera in the rear view mirror here. Um, there was this reflection from the mirror up here. What else? Um, and then of course I dodged and burned the car to bring out the highlights and the shadows. I can quickly kind of go through that right now just to show you guys. Essentially you have the, the dodge tool which brings up the highlights or brings up the lighter parts of the car. And then you have the burn tool which darkens the image. So with the dodge tool, you always wanna make sure that you're not really um, high up in the percentage. I usually keep keep it below 10% and gradually more work my way up basically uh, with the brushing. So for things like in here, if I wanted to bring out the front bumper a little bit, um, I decided to tackle the mid-tones and then using the dodge tool, which allows me to brighten it up, you can go in, turn on the brush and just kind of brush away very carefully. And then you can go in here as well. Midtones kinda, it's not super focused. You always wanna maybe stick to uh, the highlights and the shadows because uh, those are a little bit more accurate. Um, but this is a pretty important tool because it does make the car stand out a lot more. It makes it less flat. It brings up a lot of the details. 
so even in the front grille if I keep going the headlights and then you can do the darker parts so there's more contrast between the highlights and the shadows so as you can see I'm using the dodge tool the shadows at 1% actually because it's a very strong tool and you can just kind of go in just kind of accentuate a lot of the lines on the car using this tool it may be hard to tell in the video but I'll just over exaggerate on some of this stuff obviously and then just show you guys how well it actually does work and it's pretty important to use it now you have to use it with caution you don't want to overdo it as well otherwise it looks very uh, it can it, it can look very blotchy as well so if I go back to the uh, the dodge tool again I'm gonna bring up maybe the front bumper a little bit maybe bring it up to I don't know 10 percent and then the shadows so just bring up this as you can see it's getting brighter so it, these are two great tools to really bring out the details in the car but I'm not gonna go into further detail about that I just want to quickly show you guys how I did that um, one other thing that I did is when I shot the car I noticed uh, unfortunately that one of the headlights didn't uh, when I shot the picture it didn't come out like it was on it was obviously on it just didn't look like it so if I go back to the adjusted image you can see both of them are on and essentially what I did for that is using the the lasso tool on the original layer I went in and I'm gonna do this really roughly just for the tutorial but I went in I cut out this light I hit command J to extract that selection I took it over to this side I flipped it horizontally and I kind of had to play around with it obviously this isn't going to be the desired effect I put a layer mask on that layer and using the black brush I started brushing away and again this is obviously not accurate at all I just want to kind of give you guys a rough idea of exactly how I approach that so um, I'm just gonna delete it. But you can see it makes a big difference when both lights are on versus just one of them. So once I was finished cleaning up the car and the surrounding environment, um, I had something in plan and which is to, I wanted to add those lines and I wanted to make those lines look like they're kind of flowing behind the car and then going into this garage door, kind of going from here. So essentially what I did with that is if I turn off the original layer, I cut out this little opening here in the garage door and then I inserted an image right behind it. And when you see this image, you might think, what the heck is this? It's nothing to do with what the photograph is supposed to be. But I was looking actually more about uh, more for the actual uh, the lighting and the shadows that I was trying to convey with the red lines that were going to go into it and as you can see it worked out quite well so um, again I was using this so when I do bring in the lines these lines would kind of go flow behind the car and right into this door here um, so next thing before I get into actually showing you guys all those lines uh, some of the other elements that I brought in were um, just to fill in some of the space here uh, I brought in some tires that I just kind of found on Google uh, and if I open up this layer here uh, it is broken down into a couple different layers and I can kind of quickly go through what it is um, there's a layer behind it which is more of just like a shadow it's brushed in just to look make it look like the tires are part of the environment and then another layer because if the tires were sitting up against the wall they would obviously make the wall behind it darker so again it's just a black brush that I applied behind the tires and then I applied a bunch of different adjustment layers to the tires as you can see this is the original image that I got um, so I had to adjust it quite drastically in order to fit the environment uh, I adjusted it with the levels adjustment 
Um, if I just open this up, I just dragged the white slider all the way down to the left just to darken it up because obviously this is kind of behind the wall. Uh, so they're in the shadows. I applied a hue and saturation adjustment to it. So I just desaturated the image uh, quite a lot. And then I applied a color balance uh, adjustment to it. Uh, what did I do here? I believe in the shadows, I just brought it towards the, uh, the blue side a little bit further. So those are the adjustments that I made to the tires just to fit them in with the environment a little bit better. Next up, I made some further adjustments to the overall image through the usage of levels again. Um, and then I'm quickly gonna go through them again just to show you guys what I mean. So I still felt like there was a little bit too much yellow in the ground here. So I applied a uh, hue and saturation layer mask to, to the image. And then I masked out so it only applied to the ground. And as you can see, I just brought, out, brought down the saturation so it's a little bit more gray and not so red. You can see the difference. Uh, I then also, this is another uh, level adjustments. If I click it on, I darkened up this corner in here. So there's more contrast between this foreground here and the background. And essentially, again, it's just a levels adjustment with a mask on top of it that's feathered out. And then another adjustment, which is a levels adjustment my computer is being kind of slow. So what I did with this one is essentially the same thing. It's a level of adjustment, but this time I brought the black up. So it gave me a little bit more contrast between the foreground and the car and the back building. So the back building wasn't so much in focus. And uh, you can see the difference here. It really brightened up the image. Last but not least, um, the light source, I wanted the light source coming from here. So I added a, a haze effect. And in hindsight, I could have reduced it maybe to about 50%. Let's just say 50. Uh, but again, it just kind of separated the foreground from the background and it gave the image a little bit more, more of a dynamic look and feel. And what this is again, it's just a oval shape, white oval shape that has a massive Gaussian blur applied to it. And then I masked it out. If I disable this layer mask, I masked it out. So it doesn't affect too much of the car. And then it doesn't go over top of the building here. So it just looks like it's just affecting the environment right in here. So now let's get into the most interesting part of this tutorial and the most common question that I had about this image itself. And this was about the abstract lines that I brought into this image, which I created on my own. Uh, and I will show you exactly how to do that. So let me just turn all of them on one by one. There's the red one. There's another red one behind here which is masked out and looks like it's going behind the car into the garage. And this is all using just basically layer masks. There's another one. And I will show you guys once I create one line, how to manipulate some of them and how to make them look part of the environment. There's another main line, I believe. Yep. That's the main line going behind the car. And again, uh, all I did is just draw the line and then masked it out so it doesn't look like it's over top of the car. Okay. There's another line. My computer's being a little slow. Apologize about that. There's a ground line. So I created these lines essentially using the same method, but to convey that it almost looks like they're floating above the ground and then 
this is sort of casting a shadow right on the ground. It made it look that much cooler. And then another one right here that's casting a shadow as well. Okay. So let's get to the fun part. So now that I have these lines in, I'm going to show you guys exactly how I created these. And to do these, you need another Adobe product called Adobe Illustrator. So let's go into it right now. And this program is great for drawing vector shapes, uh, anything that's vector based that you can use and then bring it into Photoshop. So essentially how I drew these lines, and this is very subjective and it may vary from how you want, what you want to achieve and how you want to make it look, but I can kind of give you guys a, um, a rough guidance as to how exactly how I did these lines and how I made them look. So what you want to do is you want to select the paintbrush tool. You can also do it with the pen tool, but just a quicker way to show you guys. Uh, with the paintbrush tool, you want to have just a stroke selected, black. You want to draw a bunch of random swirls that kind of overlap each other. Okay, let's just say that's good enough. You want to select the whole thing by dragging over top of the entire, all of the lines. You want to go under object, blend, blend options. You want to do specified steps as the option. You can adjust this number based on your preference. The more specified steps, the more intricate the design will be. And I usually keep the orientation to align to page versus the path. So I hit OK. And then again, I go under object. I go under blend and then I hit make. And you're thinking to yourself, wow, this looks like crap. Well, the reason being is because the stroke on this is way too thick to see any of the uh, any of the details. So let's just say we reduce the stroke to 0.25. That's still a little too thick. So what we want to do is bring it down to maybe 0.08. So now you can see it's starting to take some sort of rough shape. Um, and again, I did this really quickly. I experimented a lot before I brought these shapes into Photoshop, but it's really cool because you make, you can make these different shapes. You can make these different opacities. You can make them different colors. And all you have to do is by using the direct selection tool, the white arrow here, you can click on individual paths and you can actually manipulate them in any way you want. Okay. You can also actually adjust the color. So if I wanted this green, you can adjust it. It's all vector based. Uh, so let's just say I want to adjust just the color on this one. I can actually double click into the stroke and make this a red. I can also adjust the opacity on this by going to transparency and I can adjust the transparency of just the red. I can also adjust the stroke on individual paths. So I can go back into stroke and I can make this super thick. So again, it's all very subjective, but there's a lot of experimentation when it comes to this. You just have to take your time, see what kind of effect you're trying to go after, and then kind of draw those shapes and experiment with the stroke, with the opacity, with the colors. But once you're done with this, all you have to do is just literally select the entire vector shape, hit command copy, and then go back into Photoshop and then just paste. Just paste it again. So if you don't want to lose quality, if you're increasing and decreasing the size, you want to paste it as a smart object. If you want to keep the file size down, you want to bring it in as a pixels. That being said, once you start messing around with the size, it will deteriorate the actual quality of the uh, vector shape because it's no longer a vector shape. It's not a smart object, so you can't go back and adjust it. So let's just say smart object. And then I hit enter and hopefully my computer
because I just got this computer. So uh, that being said, it is a pretty large file. Uh, it's 1.2 gigs. And then uh, adding more smart objects to the file will slow it down as well. Okay, let's just say I cancel it. Okay, so it looks like my computer's frozen, guys. I'm gonna have to edit this and I'll show you guys how to bring in it again. Okay, I'm back, guys. Uh, so as you can see, anytime you bring in a smart object, especially one that is so complex, even though I have a very good machine, it's still because this file is already 1.3 or over a gig large in size, it basically uh, froze my files. So let's just try that again. We're gonna copy and paste, but this time I'm just gonna bring it in as pixels because otherwise my machine would freeze up again. So let's just, uh, hopefully it doesn't freeze up this time, it shouldn't. Um, okay, let's just bring it to the top. Okay. Okay, so here's the shape that we brought in. And again, you can see um, I didn't mess around with it too much, but it's very similar to the effect that I had, that I got from these shapes here. Um, so essentially, um, I also manipulated the colors in Photoshop while I was in, in, in here. So you just have to double click into the layer, click on color overlay, and then I decided to do a kind of like a red and white theme. So essentially this, and then I'm not sure if I drop down the opacity or not, but uh, basically that's the gist of the effect. And let's just delete the one I just made, but all of these shapes are just random shapes that I brought in, layered, and then masked behind the car. So it looks like it's part of the environment. I was sort of being creative with the, uh, with the shot the, the lines ref reflecting on the ground and again it's just basically manipulating the 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 coloring of the actual vector image uh manipulating sort of the if i click on one of the uh images let's just let's say oops which one is this okay that's the one in the back let's just uh try the one on the ground which one is that? Okay, let's just say the one on the ground. I also use the Edit Transform Perspective tool to adjust the lines as well. So, uh, you know, so it looks like it's actually on the right perspective in the actual environment. But again, as you can see, I just kind of masked it out and made it look like it's sitting behind the car. Uh, oops, I accidentally brought that in again. And that's the gist of it when it comes to making the lines. You just have to be super creative in thinking of how can I make this work in this sort of composition. You want to think of all the details that go into, uh, you know, making this image as realistic as possible. So you want to think about the lines are going behind the car. So you also want to make sure that they appear in the window of the car all the way to the back here. Casting the shadow was another just touch that I wanted to do. It's just to make it a little bit more realistic. Uh, and again, it's just being um, thinking ahead and just being creative when it comes to this stuff. So for the last part of this tutorial, I just applied a couple different techniques to give this image the final look and feel. I applied a levels adjustment layer to it. I applied a color balance layer to it, which brought in more blues and greens. And then I applied a color lookup layer, which again gave it uh, a unique look to it. So that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you guys learned something. I showed you guys a bunch of new methods and tools today. Um, I really do hope you enjoyed it. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out me on check me out on Instagram, Damien.plisco. Uh, there will be definitely more content and more videos coming up in the near future, so don't be sure don't miss those out. Uh, till then, see you guys later.